Good morning and thank you for joining us. We're gonna get started in a few minutes. Good morning. I'm Jen Bowser, Sustainability Engagement Manager in Resource Management and Planning and Chair Elect of the Staff Association. On behalf of the Staff Association and Human Resources, I'd like to welcome you to Cabinet Conversations. Cabinet Conversations is a series of conversations with campus leaders to get to know them on a more personal level and to hear from them on important issues that are impacting our campus. This series came out of responses from the Staff at Work Survey the engagement survey conducted by the Council of UC Staff Assemblies, also known as CUCSA, and an idea wave campaign that was used in part to develop the Staff Association strategic plan. Today we'll be speaking with Ann Buckley, Chief Communications and Marketing Officer. Before we get started, uh, we have taken all of the necessary precautions to present, prevent against Zoom bombing. However, should an incident occur, we will end the session immediately and then reach out with a, another date where we can continue this conversation. Questions were submitted beforehand. However, uh, if you would like to submit a question, you can do so in the Q&A. We will try to get to as many questions as time will allow today. And without further ado, let's get started. Good morning, Anne, how are you today? I'm doing well, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. This is a, this is a treat. Oh, we are so excited to have you today. Um, you know, looking back, I realized that your first day at UC San Diego was March 2nd of 2020. And not two weeks later, there was a stay at home order due to the pandemic. And you had just moved here um, to San Diego from Alabama. Um, what has this last year been like uh, transitioning to a, a new city and in a new position? It, it's been interesting and exciting and a little unnerving and um, very hopeful. And I, I realized toward, as we started coming out of this pandemic, as we're turning a corner that I, I don't think there would have been a better place to be during this time. Um, you know, I arrived in the middle of a crisis, was on campus about three days in my actual office um, and then went over to work in the chancellor's complex so I could be in the meetings. and. Um, then we left. So I was I was managing a crisis on of, of mammoth proportions with with my team, who I didn't know. I, I didn't really know all the people on the team. I didn't know whose phone numbers were where, who managed what, and uh, what our communications channels were all at, at the beginning. Um, all the while um, building an organization. You know, there was no CCMO position prior to this. So I was also building an organization. And then operating at the cabinet level um, in helping with decision making and 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 um, I, I have to say it's hard to read a room you've never been in, but it's been it's been fascinating to 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 learn a position remotely. <laughs> I can only imagine the principles stay the same. The principles and the 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 strategic planning process and all of that is the same. It's just, it, it's really getting to know the people. So I, I know everybody remotely now and I and I, I feel like we're gonna have to carry rectangles around when we get on campus. That it looks like our screens for, for me to <laughs> adjust. <laughs> yes, um, I have seen a couple of people um, when I've come on, on campus to get flu shot, um, including yourself and uh, my vaccinations and I think also the mask, right? It just yeah. can't recognize people the same way that you did before. So it'll be a, a learning process for all of us in a transition. Yeah, yeah. Um, and how have you been spending your non-work time while social distancing? Do you have 
hobbies? Um, a couple of things. One, I well, I, I I was in a house search for the for part of it. You know, I was selling my home in Alabama and then trying to find one here, and I did. So, so moving has taken a lot of time and getting settled um, in a new place. Um, so I have gotten to know my new neighbors. I, I have two dogs, so I spend time outside with them. Um, I've gone on drives up and down the highway, and then I've also a couple of years ago started um, messing around with watercolors. So I'm trying to. I'm doing some painting that uh, I, I enjoy. I, I really love painting. I'd never done it in my life. And one day they just started coming out and I thought, well, go with it. Go with the flow as it were. <laughs> it's very therapeutic yeah. to focus on something else and it helps your mind just yeah. not think Agreed. about other things that are happening. Yes, I love it. Um, so we'll just jump right into the work portion sure. of this. Um, how, you know, many staff wonder how they might be able to chart a path to career success. Can you share with us your background and your career path and how you got to UC San Diego? Sure. Um, and I think mine would be not so much a charted a path as went with it as, it, as, as opportunities presented themselves. Um, my background was actually in journalism. Uh, public relations wasn't really a discipline taught in college um, until um, late 80s, early 90s, um, it, it was really journalism. And then when you left journalism, you went into communications or public relations and marketing. Um, so I started my career as a journalist um, out of college. I joined the Associated Press um, and I worked in the Albuquerque Bureau for three or four years um, covering state stories. And, and of course, at a wire service, you also learn to write sports and do weather forecasts and everything. It makes you really a, a jack of all trades in news. And then I was called up to the New York City Bureau um, on the national news desk. So I spent quite a bit of time on the national news desk. And that was, that was a fascinating experience for me because I was an editor. So I would work with the team up there to determine what stories would become the front page of every newspaper in the country, which stories we were covering and providing for the newspapers and television stations. And then we'd direct the coverage of that. So I, I very much enjoyed my time in news. Um, life happens. I wound up leaving news later, um, starting a family um, and wanted to be able to, to be home with my children when they were little because I, my mother had died when I was very young and I, I, wanted, I wanted them to have that experience. And so I thought, what am I going to do? I, I can't go back there. So I thought, well, I can write. I, I, I know news. I know what's newsworthy. So I up and started a little PR firm in Richmond, Virginia, and it grew and grew. And I was mostly dealing with lawyers and law firms and then um, started getting some corporate clients. And then um, one of my friends was working at Virginia Commonwealth University, and they were, they were looking for someone to head up communications for their cancer center. And cancer is very near and dear to my heart. And I thought, well, I would care about that a lot. So I applied and um, I didn't get the job, <laughs> but they called me later and they said, hey, we actually have a bigger job. We wanna put your background to use here and put you in charge of communications for the public relations side for the university and the hospital. So I kind of learned my way around that model. It's public urban research university with an academic medical center. And there's only about 60 of them in the United States and they're usually younger universities. So I spent 11 years at VCU learning my way in that type of organization, as opposed to a four year, you know, undergraduate college or, you know, things like that. This was, or a private or a, you know, an all male or an all female school. This, this is, as I said, a, a specific model. And then back in 2015, um, a recruiter from the unit working on behalf of the University of Alabama at Birmingham contacted me about the overarching position there, CCO. And UAB was the aspirational peer for VCU, again, Public Research University Academic Medical Center. And so I thought, here, here we go. You know, if I don't do this now, I won't do it. So I, I did just up and moved there. My kids were in college. So I, I went and then um, had a ball. We, we accomplished a lot, built a fabulous team and a fabulous communications function there. And then um, saw the position at UC San Diego last year. Um, actually, the year before last, I, I, I blanked out a year. Um, and UC San Diego, same model, research university, public academic medical center. And it's aspirational peer for all of those models. And I thought, okay, if we're gonna do it, throw your hat in and, and, and here I am. So it's not really a, a, a 
path I charted, but it just kind of built on itself. So um, if, if I guess I could, I could say it was a path I charted because it all made sense, but I, I had no idea. I mean, my, my sense is you make plans and they, you know, you, you, they get last. <laughs> you, just, you just go with it. <laughs> yeah, I have a general idea of where I'm going, but I, I definitely feel as though opportunities have presented themselves to me and I've chosen which direction I should go in and absolutely, you know, it either and works be open to them because each of them is a growth opportunity. Well, we are lucky that you chose this one and to have oh. you here. Um, in the last year, communications has been incredible. I, I think all staff have been able to recognize the improvements. So thank you oh. for that. Well, thank this team. Uh, they're, they're lovely. We just put some strategy around it and, and it's, it's working, I hope, knock wood. <laughs> Um, well, so tell us more about your, your role, um, your communications and marketing, uh, chief communications and marketing officer for the entire UC San Diego system. So that's the main campus, health and scripts, correct? And athletics, yes. And, and, and enrollment management is a part of our, our shop also, a, a dotted line in, and, it, and it's really to, to to, to align strategy across all of our entities. So yes, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great job. It's a big job um, and it's, it's a lot of people working and, and rowing in the same direction um, once, we, once we got to, um, once we got to um, the strategic plan itself. And so what's a typical day like? Is there a typical day? <laughs> no, and I think that's exactly why I love the line of work I'm in. And I think it's what drew me to journalism. You know, it's called news because it's new. And, and, it's, and in communications and in telling the great stories, it's a different story every day. And particularly here, but a typical day is hilarious because... I, you know, when I get to the calendar part, I know that's kind of just a suggestion. <laughs> Those are things that if nothing else happens, I will be doing what's on the calendar. But um, I start by reading all the news and checking all the social media so I can, A, know what's going on in the world, how it might impact us, whether you're a student, a faculty member, a staff member, a patient, um, one of our scholar athletes, whatever. Um, we could be affected by any by a myriad of things. And then I also want to see what people are saying about us. So I keep Google alerts set for all three entities, whether it's UC San Diego, UCSD, or University of California, San Diego. So they'll all pick up whether, however people refer to us, um, answer emails. And then as I said, um, uh, checking my calendar, knowing again, it's kind of a guardrail, but if I have something big planned, then it's making sure you're dressed accordingly. You know, one day at UAB, I wound up going up in a Chinook helicopter with the ROTC and was, and was not really dressed appropriately because I, and I have a picture of all these soldiers in their soldier boots and uniforms and my heels you know, sitting and strapped in on the side of this. But we did it because one of our um, senior leaders was going up too. So I was, I was on board just to kind of chronicle it. Or one day at Virginia Commonwealth, I remember going to the James River where we had a, a research pier and that, you know, getting on a boat and looking for sturgeon with the researchers and thinking, oh, I can't believe I'm on a boat and I'm getting paid. Um, and then, uh, and then here, I think it's been a much more emotional experience of, of not having the same day. And, and one of those was, um, was accompanying um, Chancellor Kosla and the CEO of our health system, Patty Mason, over to Remac one day. To uh, We were shooting some video and talking to pe people getting their COVID vaccines. And... Um, you know, you talk about not planning a day. Who'd have thunk five years ago that I would watch the emotion and the joy and the the just the relief on on people's faces getting a vaccine mm -hmm. against a disease that's you know killed half a million people in this country and counting. And that was that was exceptionally meaningful for me. I'm getting emotional hearing you talk about it. So I can only imagine what it was like seeing. Yeah, it was very moving. Uh, um, okay. Switching a little bit, um, how many news media outlets does UC San Diego regularly provide the new provide news updates to? Oh heck, um, anywhere from one, depending on the content, to ten thousand, depending on the content. We can we can tailor our media lists to the hyperlocal, which are the weeklies in in small communities throughout California. 
to um, the London Times, to, to, the, to, to Agence France Presse, which is AFP, which is the wire service in France, to um, all our national media. You know, it, it depends on what story you're pitching, um, how you tailor your media list. You don't want to pester reporters with something they don't care about, um, but you do want to get your story told. And I find a lot of the stories we tell here don't really need pitching, they're softballs. You toss them up and, and because what we do is so meaningful and, 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 and the, the prestige and distinction of the UC San Diego brand is such that it, it, it commands attention anyway um, because it is valid and it is newsworthy. So um, we do a lot of pitching to media by topic and then we also are able to, to pitch via social media, You know, follow particular reporters who cover your areas. Um, follow them on Twitter, read their work and, and build a relationship so that when you do have a story to tell, um, you've, you've got that credibility with the reporter. So again, we can pitch one particular reporter with an exclusive because we want serious, you know, overwhelming focus on us coverage, or we can pitch experts to breaking news really to, to share our expertise in a particular topic to provide context for people um, experiencing something. I feel like I'm reading something about UC San Diego in the news or, or hearing it, seeing it pretty much every day because yeah. what we are doing on the campus, just like you said, is incredible work and we are world renowned. So um, it's good to hear that it makes it easy. <laughs> Yeah, well, it does mostly. And then sometimes, you know, you have a great story you're trying to tell and you can't break through the noise, mm. you know, and, and so you have to find that that particular identifying or that differentiating piece about your story. And oftentimes it's not even that we have to pitch the media. We tell it ourselves. We have what we call owned media, and that is the UC San Diego news site. And we are we are able and we do most certainly tell our story there. And then we share those on social media and media follow us too. I mean, we are a legit news source for UC San Diego information. So um, a lot of a lot of media coverage we get is reporters who see stuff we've posted or put on Twitter or, you know, Instagram, whatever, and and we uh, we get coverage that way also. That's great. Um, how do you balance creating a cohesive message and materials while also allowing units to be unique and not have everything look the same? Well, um, it, it's a it's a fine line that you that you walk um, because you do want your units and schools and colleges to be able to have their own identity, but it needs to be within the overarching UC San Diego brand. Um, we don't want a house of brands. We want a branded house. And at the end of the day, the overarching brand is UC San Diego and all the other components are a part of UC San Diego. They are, you know, it's not just business school or it's not just medical school. It's, it, it's, it's oomph and, and, and it's, um, it's, it's a uh, halo effect comes from that UC San Diego brand. So it, it should always, and, and, and usually, and, and is the master brand and then other sub brands come from it. And then we also try to give the units and schools um, our creative license within the brand. So we have a selection of colors that are available that are approved that aren't just the blue and gold, but they're complementary to the blue and gold. Um, you know, as long as the UC San Diego brand is there, we will work with you to help differentiate your area so that it stands out and, and is recognizable as its own, but again, within the, within the UC San Diego brand. And a related question is, are we going to create a spirit brand that connects the university more to students and Triton Pride? And would this be collaborative? Um, actually, we already have a spirit mark and it is the one athletics uses. It's the Triton. Um, it's their official mark and it's a spirit mark. It's, it, and it's, it's not just athletics, but it's their main brand. But we see it a lot with intercollegiate athletics, with rec sports, that's the brand for spirit. And then the academic brand is the UC San Diego, which carries um, UC San Diego Health, UC San Diego, yeah. In what ways is communication supporting staff? Oh, did you freeze? Did I freeze? 
<laughs> One of us froze. Okay. On such, I get a, the on such now? a sunny day. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so the question was, in what ways is communication supporting our staff? Oh, gosh. Um, I think communication supports our staff um, really across the board by showing how our staff contribute to the success of the university. Um, a, a, a huge priority right now is building the infrastructure for internal communications. Um, there is a, a, a very important need to, to provide our internal folks, staff, um, the information, the talking points about our brand, um, arm them with key messages when issues arise, because your internal audience, they're your, they're your frontline ambassadors. And if, and if they are communicated with authentically and honestly and frequently, then they become your ambassadors. When, when times are rough, they're, they're out there you know, singing your praises and they feel vested and a part of the story itself. So you'll see a lot of changes in this next year between um, increasing the amount of, uh, you know, changing, uh, we're, we're gonna produce a three times a week newsletter for staff and faculty. Um, it will be very dynamic. It will be, um, there'll be staff sections, faculty sections, actually just people sections. We're all, we're all at the end of the day, you see San Diego, right? Um, and it'll be delivered via inbox, but it'll um, it'll contain and 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 have things. So some are some are personal that people will be able to submit themselves, whether it's a book you published or a chapter contributed to um, awards received, and and those eventually will be able to be self submitted because I just feel the more the, the more people are able to tell their stories and the more we're able to share their stories, the more connected everyone feels. Sounds amazing. I can't wait yeah, for that. Yeah, it's going to be good. Um, UC San Diego has recently released numerous statements condemning the anti-Black, xenophobic, and other acts of hatred in our nation. In your opinion, how can the university continue to move the needle to fight systemic racism? I, I so appreciate that question. Um, and I can, I can speak to how we move the needle in terms of communications and inclusive communications, um, I, I find that when when people when people are feeling that they're that they're not in, in that they can't see themselves as a part of or or um, being there there, um, it's mostly because there's been a block toward diversity or or inclusion and. In my area, um, it's it's I find find it very important that that diversity, equity, and inclusion be be woven into the strategic communications plan itself. Um, it, it's 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 not just hiring practices, but by modeling diversity, equity, and inclusion in the planning process itself. Um, the stories we tell, the images we display. Um, we don't want them to just check a box or the old tree in a tree on, on the quad, you know. Um, it's got to portray the possibility of being a part of the experience. Um, and institutional messaging should, should really show anybody looking in where they could fit in, right? Um, so we would do that with internal communications, external communications, executive communications, you know, have Pradeep telling these stories too, um, crisis management and environmental scanning, frankly. Um, and the same holds true for our paid media when we do advertising. We, we need to make sure that the images we use and the, and the marketing efforts are reaching the intended audiences with the appropriate messaging and, and frankly, the cult, cult, culturally appropriate channel too. So um, if you look at, is there enough context in an image that um, a first generation student would feel as though they could fit in? Do our residence hall photos look affordable and, and sufficient? Or is it, is it a P Lily Pulitzer decorated dorm room with Greek lettering on the wall and, and fancy dresses in a, in a mock closet that leave a whole lot of people out of the story, right? They can't see themselves fitting there. Um, are our research images reflected beyond race? You know, this isn't just for recruiting students and about our students. Do our researchers, do our faculty, do our staff, are they able to see where they fit into the story also? Um, are people with disabilities pictured? Is the research beneficial to everybody? 
you know, or is it just beneficial to a certain group of people? Um, do, the, do, the, do the videos we share on social media reflect a diversity of ideas and lifestyle? So I, I think it's important that, that it be, it be mel melded throughout the, the, the communications plan and that um, images be extremely thoughtful um, and be very deliberate and, and, and help move that story forward rather than hold something in the past. Um, you mentioned recruiting students. Um, so one of the questions we had received was, um, how can UC San Diego marking help in student recruitment efforts? Oh heck, we do that. We do that all the time. We work very closely with enrollment management. My colleague Katie Santos Coy, um, they have an entire program aimed at recruiting students, whether it's you know, juniors and seniors in high school, we're actually starting targeting them a lot younger now, um, building that funnel, building that affinity for the brand. And so they do that with all sorts of collateral materials and outreach and programming in schools and, and um, working with high school counselors and even middle school counselors now. Very robust program. And I would urge you to look at um, like the Triton Day website when they're ready to post that. I'm sorry, my old dog just <laughs> made his way in. <laughs> he might start barking in a minute. He's like, what are you doing, lady? That's um, okay. <laughs> yeah, so they do a lot of stuff um, in the, they, they do a lot of work in that space, recruiting students. As a matter of fact, we we have a tremendous, we, we, I think I think I heard Dr. Kosla say, uh, Chancellor Kosla say, we're the second most applied to school in the United States. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, as we come to the end of Women's History Month, do you have any advice for female staff who are interested in advancing their careers at UC San Diego? Um, yes, I do. I, I, would, I would recommend that when you get to the table, whatever table it is you've aspired to get to, that, that you, you own that. You own that you're at that table. And by that, I mean, trust yourself trust your, your, your knowledge, trust your skill set, and have the confidence to participate in the process in a way that doesn't detract from your knowledge. So for example, um, I often see younger women excusing themselves before they talk or qualifying what they're about to say with, you know, I could be wrong, but, or um, I'm gonna venture an opinion here, you know, or I don't know if this is appropriate, but I'm going to drop it right here. Um, it's appropriate because you're at the table and, and enough people thought you had earned that position at the table. I, I would say, believe yourself, use a confident, authoritative, not annoying voice. But, you know, if you normally, if people tell you, you sound like a teenager, I would find your, your grown up voice, exhale often, you know, just, believe in yourself and don't apologize don't back into things don't 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 back into your opinion before you deliver it you know if you're wrong you'll find out soon enough because you won't be at the table again but you know make the best make make the best of your opportunity there to show why you were selected why you know what you're doing and and go for it you know if not you then who i am so grateful that we are recording this session because I will be playing that back um, probably a few times. That was very inspiring and a, a good reminder for you myself. I, I find myself doing those things a lot. So well, I could be wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think I really think advice. women need to believe in themselves. When, when it, you know, all the way to the table too. You know, that's what gets you there, and it's what keeps you there. And if you don't know what you're doing, say so. You know, everybody's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get found out, but there's nothing wrong with not knowing. Mm -hmm. Find out and, and, and move forward. Very true. It's okay to admit you don't know, as opposed to pretending. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> um, what are you most excited about for 2021, both personally and professionally? Professionally, I'm most excited about going on campus and seeing it, seeing it as a thriving, vibrant college experience. Um, I see it already when I go over there and kind of wander around or look to see where I'm going and 
take my own little tours, really, because, you know, when I'm in meetings and I hear people talk about a building, I'm like, where is that? Oh, no, I got to figure this out. So I'm excited to get on campus and be a part of campus life um, professionally. And then personally, I'm excited that once once we're able to travel, um, my kids will come visit. Um, I can't wait. My Some of my friends will, you know, I think there's a little line of them forming to start coming out. <laughs> So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to show people my new my new place where I mean, you know, my new city. It's it's absolutely stunning. It is it is a lovely, lovely place. And I love the West anyway, but I can't imagine having landed in a better place. Do you know where you'll want to travel to once you can? I, I, I no, I, I just want to travel again. I, I just want it's to travel. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see the Pacific Northwest. Mm. I, I've lived in a lot of places. Um, you know, I've, I've done New York, New Jersey, Virginia, Alabama, Texas, New Mexico. I'd like to. And those were where I places I lived. I'd like to just see other parts of the country that I haven't lived but haven't seen either. Um, is there anything else that you want to share with us today um, about the communication strategic plan or anything that we should be looking out for coming soon? Um, just, you know how to find me. Um, if you have a great idea, shoot it over to me via email. It, it, we are, we are, I've never seen a place like this. I mean, look what happened with Return to Learn. That was the vision of the chancellor who, who, who understood the expertise at his fingertips and said, have at it, you know, and look what happened. We, we, we had the lowest infection rate on a university campus in, in the world because of, of that willingness to, to trust the, the expertise at your fingertips. So, you know, there's, there's, there's 55, 70, 55, 60,000 experts here. Shoot me your ideas if you have them. And you know, will it happen? Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But again, you won't know if you don't try. I welcome opinions and ideas. So we are getting a few questions in the chat. Um, I can read them off. So there are a hundred different groups on campus all working on getting the word out about their programs. Is there any effort to try to harness all of the promotional bandwidth across campus? Yes, we're working on a campus calendar that will work for the entire campus, um, that it, it, will, it will fit to the, um, you know, it will obviously live on the home page, but can be populated by various groups and people will be able to sign up to attend and put, have it added to their calendar and they can share on social and um, it'll be for all of, all of the university. That's, that's where we're trying to get to. It's just, it, it's a process, trust me, um, but we, we will get to it. Uh, and then another question of what have you learned about the UC San Diego messaging in the virtual world? That it is just as important, if not more important to say it often and say it loud because there's a disconnect in a remote communication that you don't have in face-to-face. -face. Um, and to overcome that, it's, it's find as many channels as possible to say the same thing. Okay. Well, that was our last question. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today, Anne. Um, you know, the last time I hosted a cabinet conversation was with BC Linen. And one of the questions I was prompted to ask her was what her favorite cupcake was. And so I'm gonna ask you, what is your favorite cupcake? Red velvet. <laughs> and I accept those. <laughs> Everyone take note. <laughs> Red velvet cupcakes, just that's all there, that's all I can say. I, I shouldn't say it, I, can, I shouldn't even utter the words. <laughs> They're my crib tonight. Well, thank you again. Thank um, you. We really appreciate this opportunity to speak with you. Our staff appreciate hearing from you. And so on behalf of the Staff Association and Human Resources, thank you again. And thank, thank you to you all so of you for attending today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at another Staff Association hosted event.
Thank you.